A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you still there? Hi! The town of Marsburg was in a mining region, but a widow named Patton operated a small farm just outside of town. Here, an orphan boy named Bobby Long worked to earn food and shelter for himself and his big black horse named Zack. Bobby was saddling Zack when Sheriff Madden drew rein near the barn. Oh, oh, oh. Well, hi there, Sheriff. Hello, Bobby. If you're looking for Mrs. Patton, she's in town at the bank. I know. I just came from the bank. Oh, then, I reckon you saw her there. Banker Oak sent a message saying he wanted to talk to her about something mighty important, so he took the buckboard and hurried to town. Banker Oaks wanted to talk to her about you and Zack. Oh? Then he mad about Zack throwing his son. Well, Sheriff, I told Steve Oaks not to try to ride Zack, but he took him when I wasn't looking. It's his own fault that Zack threw him. He's thrown stones at Zack and beaten him whenever he had a chance. That's not the way Steve tells what happened. If he says anything different, he's lying. Well, that's your word against his, Bobby. But, Sheriff, I'm that telling you that... The believes what Steve says about Zack. Fact is, try to get a court order that will force you to get rid of your horse. Oh, no, no, I... I couldn't get rid of him. He can't make me get rid of him. That's what the judge told him, Bobby. He wouldn't issue any such order. Gosh, I'm glad of that. Now that banker's hopping mad. He told Mrs. Patton he'll not extend her mortgage unless you get rid of Zack. What? That's why I came here, Bobby. It has been mighty good to you since your dad died. I know you wouldn't want to see her lose this farm. Wait. You mean she'll lose it unless Zack goes away? That's right. Now, Bobby, I know a rancher over in Buckland County who'll be glad to buy Zack and pay a good price for him. He'll be mighty good to the critter. I couldn't sell Zack. He belonged to my dad. Zack's all I have in the world, Sheriff. We're, we're pals. I know, I know how you feel, son. Someday you'll be able to buy another horse. I don't want another horse. Zack's mine and I'm keeping him. You can't make me get rid of him. Well, in that case, little Patton will lose his farm. But it isn't Zack's fault that he threw Steve Oaks. I want Steve to stay away from him. I told him to leave my horse alone. Bobby, Banker's a mighty influential man in town. If he says you've got to sell Zack, he'll find a way to make you do it. That only old skinflint. I wish his bank and all his money had burned to the ground. That wouldn't hurt the banker half as much as it would hurt the rest of the folks in town. 
Cash belongs to the people who deposited in that steady boy today. <coughs> you think about selling Zack, Bobby. I'll see that he gets a good home. Get yeah. oh. Steve Oaks had left you alone, he wouldn't have been thrown. I tried to tell the sheriff it wasn't your fault, Zack. Oh, Zack, I I wouldn't want to stay around Marsburg if, if you weren't with me. Bobby led Zack to a nearby stream where he stood patiently with the reins dangling while Bobby sat on a tree stump thinking about what the sheriff had said. He didn't want Mrs. Patton to lose her farm, but he couldn't bring himself to part with Zack. He knew his father had loved the powerful black horse. During his father's long illness when Dr. Bills took all of their savings, Pete Long had steadfastly refused to sell Zack. Dad wouldn't do it. And I'll not sell you either, Zack. We'll both go away. Everything I own is in your saddlebag. We'll leave now. Easy, Zack. Steady. We'll go to another town where Banker Oaks will never find us. Come on, boy. Get it, Zack. Bobby traveled steadily. As darkness fell, he reached the Badlands. But instead of stopping or trying to circle the area, most men avoided. He entered it eagerly. The desolate rocky terrain held no terrors to equal the fear of having to sell Zack. Bobby urged the big black horse forward. With the Badlands between us and Bank Roads, we'll have nothing to worry about, Zack. Get up. Come on. Older and more experienced travelers than Bobby had been lost in the Badlands. By daybreak, the boy realized he had been riding in circles. He was hopelessly lost. At 8 o'clock that morning, banker Jess Oak stopped in Sheriff Madden's office on his way to the bank. Well, Sheriff, I stopped at Patton's this morning. Mr. Oaks, I talked to Bobby yesterday about selling Zack. He seems set on keeping the credit. I thought you might change your mind about... Sheriff, Bobby and that horse are both gone. The boy's cleared out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. The widow will be downright worried about the boy. She thinks a lot of him. Well, it's good riddance if you ask me. Mr. Oaks, Steve might not be telling the truth about being thrown. Bobby claims Steve mistreated Zack. Who's Bobby Long to call my son a liar? But, Mr. Oaks... That orphan's no good. He'll get into serious trouble one of these days. Trouble enough to think about right now without worrying about a 16-year-old boy. Huh? Have you ever heard of Griff Basie? Well, Basie? Of course I've heard of him. He's a killer, the leader of a gang of outlaws. That's right. I've had word that he and his gang were seen in Clemensville. Well, that's north of here, on the other side of the Badlands. Yes. Uh, Sheriff, you think Basie's likely to come here? Well, I hope not. On my way to the telegraph office now to see if there's a reply to the message I sent Marshal Boyle in Clemensville might be able to tell me which way Basie is heading. Well, I'll not detain you, Sheriff. And let me know what you learn at the telegraph office. The message the Sheriff received at the Western Union office brought a grim expression to his face. When he finished reading it, the operator on duty said, Sounded like bad news to me, Sheriff. Mighty bad, Hank. Marshal Boyle says he and his posse lost Basie's trail, but he thinks they might be heading this way. Gee, maybe we'll have a chance to collect some of those rewards that are out for those fellas, huh? Tangled with these killers, and you might not live to collect a reward. I'll be at the station, Hank, if any more messages come for me. All right, Sheriff. How long will you be there? Till the westbound stage comes in. Hush, it'll be hauling the payroll for the mine. Yeah. I'd feel a lot better about it if that cash didn't have to stay in the bank until payday. All that day, Bobby and Zack tried to find their way out of the Badlands. As the sun rose higher, intense heat increased their longing for food and water. Oh, Zack. Oh, boy. Oh. At sundown, the boy sat down on a rock and stared about helplessly. Maybe, maybe when the stars come out, I'll, I'll be able to find my way better, Zack. Gosh, Phil, I, I know you're hungry and, and thirsty, but we, we've got... Zack, look. There's a campfire ahead. 
Easy, steady, Zack. Whoever built that campfire might have food and water. Maybe they'll let us have some. Maybe they'll be able to tell us how to get out of these badlands. Come on, Zack, get up. Bobby didn't know that he was riding toward an outlaw camp. Drift Basie and the men who traveled with him were sitting around the fire eating their evening meal when they saw Zack and his young rider approaching. A man named Wash reached for his gun, but Drift Basie said, Leave it in leather, Wash. You know that rider, Drift? No. Maybe he's a lawman. Look again, Slade. He's just a youngster. Oh, 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 oh. What do you want, young fella? I, I'm lost. I, I saw your campfire and thought maybe you'd be able to help me. Well, you thought wrong. Shove on. Oh, my, my horse and I haven't had any water or food since last night. Well, that's your hard luck, youngster. Get going. Mister, I, I'm not asking for myself, but if you could spare a little water for Zack, I'd, I'd work to pay you. We have no water to spare. But Zack's traveled all the way from Mosburg. What? From where? Mosburg. Oh. Well, my pals and I are heading for Marsburg. We're going to look for work there. Um, we're cowpunchers. Oh, there, there aren't many big ranches around town, but you could probably find work at one of the mines. Sit down, son, and tell us more about the town. We'll swap water and food for information. Oh, I, I'll tell you all you want to know if you'll give me some food and water for Zach. One of the boys will take care of your horse. I'll have it. Slade, fix a plate for the boy. All right. Now, youngster, tell me how the men at the mine are paid. Drift Basie questioned Bobby. Concealing the real purpose of the conversation from the unsuspecting boy, the outlaw leader learned that on the first day of every month, the stagecoach arrived with a payroll for the mines near Marsburg. Later that night, when he thought Bobby was asleep, Griff Basie held a low-voiced conference with two of his men. According to the boy, the payroll cash is in the Marsburg Bank now. We'll start for Marsburg in the morning and get that cash late tomorrow night. There's only one trouble, Drift. What's that, boy? A posse was on our trail when we left Clemensville. What about it? We lost those lawmen by covering our tracks. The marshal might have telegraphed other lawmen to be on the lookout for us. Wash is right, boss. We'll not have any trouble if we ride into Marsburg fast. Yes, but... We'll be on our way out before anyone knows what happened. We're not stopped before we can get out of town. We'll shoot our way out if we have to. Gunplay's sure to put the law on our trail, boss. I'd rather leave that payroll in the bank than take a chance of being followed and captured. Slade, I've got it figured so as no one will be able to follow us. Yeah? Remember that shack in Marblehead Hills above the Medicine Rocks? What about it? The ground leading to that place is too hard to show any tracks. So we'll head for the shack right after the robbery. That's a good idea, boss. To take a bloodhound to follow a trail on the Marblehead Hills. What about the youngster? What about him? Well, he might tell someone he saw us. We were asking questions about Marsburg. <laughs> you think we're saddle bums looking for work? Well, he's heard us call the boss Drift. He knows my name. He knows yours, Slade. Quiet. quiet. Maybe you'll see a handbell or some reward notices for us. Don't worry, Wash. He'll not go back to Marsburg. You heard him say he left there because the banker had a grudge against him. Well, he might go somewhere else and talk. Wash, how long do you think he'll live without food and water? What do you mean? The boy was lost when he found our campfire. With the directions I'll give him to find his way out of the Badlands, he's due to spend the rest of his life traveling in circles. <laughs> and the rest of his life will be mighty short. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, 
all to continue. When Wash, Slade, and Drift Basie turned in for the night, Bobby lay motionless for fear of letting anyone know that he had overheard their conversation. He knew now that Drift and his men were wanted by the law, and he also knew they planned to rob the bank in Marsburg. He realized that the sheriff must be warned of the coming attack. He listened tensely to the breathing of the outlaws. Finally, he got to his feet and crept close to the campfire's embers. No one stirred. If I can just reach Sam without waking him. Moving softly, Bobby picked up his saddle from the ground and placed it on the back of his horse. The creaking of leather seemed unusually loud in the still night. He waited, holding his breath for a moment, fearful that the sound had roused the outlaws. But the men slept on. The boy tightened the cinch, then guided Zack away from the camp, on, hoping the gang would continue sleeping through the soft hoof beats. When he was well away from the camp, he mounted. Easy, steady, Zack. All right, Zack. Let's make a run for it, boy. Get up. The next morning in Marsburg, Sheriff Madden hurried from the Western Union office to Jess Oak's private office in the bank. He entered without knocking and thrust a telegram toward the banker. Mr. Oaks, I just got another message from Marshal Boyle. He said the Lone Ranger's on Drift Basie's trail. The Lone Ranger? You've heard of him, huh? Why, of course I've heard of him. Well, if the masked man's after Basie, he'll get him. Uh, and our worries are over, Sheriff. I'll admit I've been concerned about that gang. You've been concerned? <laughs> I was sure those killers would make a play for the mine payroll while it's here in your bank. Yeah, we can relax now. The next message you receive from Marshal Boyle will probably announce the capture of those outlaws. You know, Sheriff, I've always wanted to meet the Lone Ranger. They say he owns the finest horse in the West, a magnificent white stallion. A man would be mighty proud to own a horse like that. The Sheriff's eyes narrowed as he listened to Jess Oaks. The grizzled old lawman thought of another horse, a black stallion named Zack, and the orphan who owned him. For a moment, the sheriff's conscience bothered him. He felt uneasy because he realized that Bobby had not been given a fair chance to disprove the story Steve Oaks had told. Hmm. What's that, Sheriff? I, uh, I was thinking of Bobby Long. What about him? Well, I think he might have been telling the truth about the reason Zack threw Steve. If Steve mistreated the horse, you can't blame Zack. Sheriff, are you suggesting that my son lied about what happened? What do you think, Mr. Oaks? Sheriff Madden turned and left the banker's office. As he walked slowly down the street, he wondered where Bobby had gone. The sun was going down when Bobby Long sighted two riders coming toward him in the Badlands. Oh, oh, Zack, oh boy. He drew rein to study the men. As they came closer, he saw that one of them was an Indian, and the other was masked. Gosh, more outlaws. Hello there. Hello. Are you traveling alone? Well, yeah. I'm on my way to Marsburg. Marsburg? Well, you not reach Marsburg traveling north. Oh, no, Marsburg is that way. Oh, gosh. I, I've been going the wrong way. Isn't that right? Golly, I've lost a lot of time. Those crooks must be halfway to town by now. What crooks? Oh, I, I, I didn't... Oh, mean... Why are you not answered, Lone Ranger? What? Lone Ranger? That's right. But then that... That mask doesn't mean you're an outlaw? No, I'm not an outlaw. What's your name, son? Bobby Long. I... I, I used to live in Marsburg. You mentioned crooks, Bobby. Yeah, Drift Basie and Slade and Wash. They're on their way to Marsburg to rob the bank. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I heard them talking about it last night. I rode into their camp and asked for some food and water. They'd let me have some, but they wanted to know all about the mine payroll. The Lone Ranger and Toto listened closely while Bobby told what he had overheard in the outlaw camp. And they're going into town fast and shoot their way out if they have to. Well, I I wouldn't want anyone in Marsburg to be killed, so I figured I'd better warn Sheriff Madden. Yes, you're right, Bobby. The sheriff must be warned. How long ago did Basie start for town? They said they'd start this morning. Oh, plenty hard stopping now. Yes, Toto, but I'll try. I'll ride to Marsburg. Uh, me not think you were able to reach town before Basie came, Sabi. Do you want me to go with you, mister? No, Bobby. I'll have to travel fast. You and Toto follow me. I'll meet Sabi. All right, I'll see you later. Come, Sabi! Gosh, I... I wish he'd let me ride with him. Zack's a mighty good horse. He can travel fast. A lone ranger think maybe you and horse need food, water. I, I think we can do without the food, Tano, but we'd sure like to have a drink of water. If you could spare it. Oh, me have plenty water in canteen. Good. Gee, I, I never expected to meet you in the Lone Ranger. 
sure. I sure hope he'll be able to catch those crooks. I me not think Lone Ranger catch them now. Here, Zach. Great fella. Toto was right. In spite of the best efforts of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger was unable to reach Marsburg ahead of Drift Basie and his men. As he approached the outskirts of town, the masked man heard gunplay. Monsilver! By the time he drew Silver to a rearing halt in front of the bank, Sheriff Madden and Jess Oaks were trying to organize a posse. Oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. Several of the men with them drew their guns when they saw the masked rider. The masked man! Get him! Sheriff! Hold your fire, boys! Hold your fire, mister. Is that horse named Silver? That's right. Then you're the man I've heard about. I came to warn you about Drift Basie. Well, he and his gang just left town with the mine payroll and a couple of thousand dollars in bank funds. Was well, anyone hurt? Two of my deputies are wounded. Which way was Basie heading when he left town? East. There are five men in the gang. I'll try to follow them. Well, as soon as I get a posse together, we'll ride after you. Good. One silver! Nearly two hours after the robbery had occurred, Bobby and Toto reached town. Oh, oh, they found Sheriff Madden and his discouraged posse holding a conference in front of the bank. Jess Oaks was with the group. Hey, Bobby, what are you doing with that Indian? Bobby introduced the sheriff and Toto. In answer to the Indian's question about the Lone Ranger, Sheriff Madden said, The masked man went after Basie and his gang. My boss and I tried to follow him, but we lost his trail in the Marblehead Hills. Well, it's impossible to find tracks there. They might have better luck in the daytime, Sheriff. Sheriff, I heard Basie say that after the robbery, he and his gang would head for a shack above Medicine Rock. What? They're planning to hide out there. You heard them say that? That's right, Mr. Oaks. Young man, are you trying to say that Drift Basie took you into his confidence? I overheard him talk, and I was in his camp. Oh, now listen, Barbie. This is no time for tall stories. Uh, Sheriff, boy, tell truth. Me and Lone Ranger meet him in Badlands. Bobby tell mask friend about plan to rob bank. That's why Lone Ranger come here. I heard them planning the whole thing, Sheriff. Uh, we go to Madison Rock and look for mask friend and crooks. Sure. sure. We'll go with you. Get mounted, man. Get him up. Deep in the Marblehead Hills, the Lone Ranger was close behind the fleeing outlaws. Though they were out of shooting range, he could see them ahead of him as they raced over the moonlit trail. Monsilver! Basie and his men were approaching Medicine Rocks. When they reached the circle of boulders, the outlaw leader signaled a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Drift. That rider has been following us to stop. He's taking cover behind those boulders. Come on, let's get him. Bullet struck the rocks on all sides of the Lone Ranger as he unholstered his guns. What's wrong with you critters? We've five guns to that polecat's one. He must be local to take on odds like that. Odds or no odds, he's still firing at us. Oh! Slade! I'm hit my shoulder. I'll get him, Slade. Get down, you jughead. Oh! Slim, Slim, are you all right? Bullet broke my arm. Slade's out of the fight, and so is Slim. Well, that leaves you and Clem and me, boss. We'll not waste any more time trading lead with that sidewinder. Spread out. Boss, you go that way. Clem. Yeah, Drift. Circle to the left and keep the cover so you won't have a chance to hit you. Slim, you can trigger a gun with your left hand. You and I'll stay here to cover Wash and Clem. I have your plan, Drift. Clem and I'll be able to take that fellow by surprise. Right. Good idea. That way we'll be able to get him. Soon as you can level your sights on him, blow his head off. Now get going. Uh, hey, listen. Yeah, sounds like a lot of riders are hitting this way. They're joining the critter who's been firing at us. Stacy, this is the law. What the? I have a horsey with me. You're out of the Chris, we're done for. We can't get to the horses without showing ourselves. Let them have it. A moment later, a bullet struck Basie in the arm. A second bullet in the shoulder put him out of the fight. Wash and Clem made a half-hearted attempt to prolong the hopeless battle, but they were licked and they knew it. A few minutes later, the shooting stopped. The outlaws came from the sheltering rocks to surrender. While the outlaws' wounds were being bandaged, Jess Oaks examined the contents of their saddlebags. The sheriff turned to the Lone Ranger and said, Mister, I'm sorry we took so long to get here, but my posse and I lost your trail. I understand, Sheriff. It's almost impossible to follow a trail in these hills. But I had to keep after basing these men... I knew that if I lost sight of them, there'd be no chance of capturing them. And you took a long chance. (laughs) 
I'll admit my ammunition was running low when you arrived. We wouldn't have been able to find you if it hadn't been for Bobby Long. Well, what's that? Not right, Kimosabe. Bobby tells Sheriff we're outlaws plan hideout after robbery. He told us that they were heading for Medicine Rocks. In that case, Bobby deserves the credit for the capture of the gang. <clears throat> he also deserves credit for the recovery of the stolen money. Well, gosh, all I did was to tell what I heard. But I, I apologize for doubting your word, Bobby. I couldn't believe that you'd actually been in Drift Basie's camp. But you were right about his plans. There are plenty of reward for Basie and gang. That's right, Toto. Bobby has earned those rewards. But golly, mister, I, I didn't capture those crooks. Bobby, if it hadn't been for you, Tonto and I would still be in the Badlands trying to find Basie's trail. We'll see you again. Easy. Easy, Easy fella. Easy, fella. Adios. 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 Count. Got it, Bobby. It sounds to me like you've the makings of a first-rate lawman. What do you say, Mr. Oaks? Well, he's certainly done the law a great service tonight. The whole town owes him a debt of gratitude. And I, well, doggone it, Bobby, I'm sorry I tried to force you to sell your horse. If you stay in Marsburg, I'll see that my son leaves Zach alone. What? You mean you're not mad at me because Zach threw Steve? Well, Sheriff Madden said Steve had mistreated your horse. Well, he did. He threw stones at him and beat Zach. Well, um, let's forget the whole episode, Bobby. Why, well, I'd like to forget it, Mr. Oaks, but I thought you were going to foreclose Mrs. Patton's mortgage and take a farm away from it. <laughs> well, I reckon Mr. Oaks has changed his mind, Bobby. Come on back to town with us. The widow Patton will be mighty glad to see you. She'll be downright proud when she hears that you and Zach traveled with Tonto and the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.